this this tool can be used for prevention, or this tool can be used uh, yeah. to help educate children. So right. please talk about that as well. Right, so what I've just described would be called the conference model. That's when you peop bring people to a conference, but a lot of the work I've done has been circle work, where you, where you would go in a classroom, mm -hmm. and you would, you would help that classroom to become a community through understanding each other more. Got it. So you would use really simple questions. It could be, uh, what do you like to do after school? Yeah. Or what did you do over the summer? Or, you know, these kinds of prompts. But what you first do when you, when you bring a circle together, when you bring a class together, is, is, is you talk about values. Yeah. Yeah. And it is amazing because these are something that people share you know you might introduce it to younger kids what did your grandmother teach you about life mm -hmm. what did your aunt teach you about life right or what do you know from you know from your family or what did you learn or right. you know even you know if you as you're teaching things the teacher can integrate that what are the values in the story and how does that how does that impact us as a classroom what are our values for how we want to be with each other mm -hmm. what about respect mm -hmm. trust honesty humbleness yes you know okay. equality these kinds of values and it's beautiful what these children say they are so deep yeah. you work with these middle they school are. kids they are and amazing they, they really are amazing yeah, and it's I have one. very <laughs> beautiful yes, because they, they have these values and you evoke that out of the children and you create this community that's based on these values and all the differences you know when you when you get into these diverse classrooms it doesn't matter because these values are shared by people and it creates a certain tone and quality and then when the thing goes wrong when things happen you can bring people together and talk about that in terms of values so amy let's go to what let's go to the thing that's let's work on that when things go wrong i know there are viewers out there saying well this is all very well and good but this is nirvana Right. A lot this of is kumbaya. This is kumbaya. <laughs> this is all holding hands. This right. is all of us singing in a circle. When in reality, human behavior is not like that. Not pretty. So I want you to be able to tell our viewers uh, in a few sentences that restorative justice is not a pretty process. That no. people do often uh, say things and express things that are painful to see and yeah. are painful to hear. And then we'll go to our final question, which is where can our viewers get information on restorative justice? So let's talk about it being not a pretty process. It's, yeah, it does, that, that doesn't have to look like kumbaya at all. You bring your real emotions, you bring your anger, you bring your fear, you feel your resentment. You, you know, those real feelings have to come out in the conference. Yeah. And that's what makes it real. That's what makes the change come when yeah. people do bring all of this. And it is, it can look ugly and messy. It doesn't have to be all calm when we're sitting there intellectually talking about what's right or wrong. Right. It's, it's really deep and it's really felt and it can look really messy. But that's part of the whole process. And Got that's it. what you eliminate when you just do punishment. People aren't allowed to bring their real feelings and really get into, engage in a dialogue and, right. and, and, and really bring out that. Some of that pre-conferencing, some of those talks before help people to, to, um, to kind of um, express some of those deeper, harder emotions so that there's not physical fights. You don't want people erupting to a level where it's, you know, a violent situation. Yes. But you do want people to be real with how they feel. Yes. And so, you know, you're engaging people holistically what they think, what they feel, what they experience. That's what restorative justice is. It's, a, it's providing a safe space for people to come with all of what they experience. Okay. And if they do feel that they're, they've been uh, ostracized or they've been hurt or they've been left out, you know, that's a lot of what's at the basis yes. of bullying and, and misbehaviors and things is that people don't feel um, that they're included. Yes. This inclusive part is so important. Yes. And that's why, you know, you want to build community that is allows for people to come and really be who they are in the circle. So all this rich wealth of information that you're giving us, I was so surprised to learn from you in the last couple of days that we have one of the best centers for restorative justice 
right here in Pennsylvania. Yes. Why don't you tell us where you studied okay. and about our center in Pennsylvania and maybe some resources online. And what we'll do is at the end of the show, uh, we'll also put them up on the closing credits. Please, Amy, tell us about the center. So yes, the International Institute for Restorative Practices Got it. is in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. and. I used to fly up, if you can believe it, from North Carolina because when I heard about restorative justice, I thought, oh boy, you know, after working in the criminal justice system and all that, I was just hungry for this. And I used to fly up and just go to these incredible classes mm -hmm. that they have. So the, uh, if you go to um, International Institute for Restorative Practices, mm -hmm. or IIRP, okay. you can even just plug that in. I they have so much research information, background, they have conferences, they have even just a weekend workshop, you can take trainings. They are an amazing resource for the fabulous schools of Pennsylvania that would like to have some support in working with these in this behavior issue. And they they call the inter you know restorative practices. Correct. So restorative practices is much larger than just focusing on the justice system. Restorative practices help us look at how we can use these fundamental principles about restoring the relationships, bringing people together in a dialogue, you know, not sending somebody away and punishing them, but understanding what's going on with them. Great. And the people who are involved in that deciding what the outcome should be. Right. That's accountability, taking responsibility. You may pay back someone, and there may be some times where they feel like, well, this person does need to have some kind of maybe suspension or things like that, but it still right. gives people the, the, uh, the process of coming together and really discussing it. But at IRP, you can see how you can apply this in the workplace, in hospitals, in churches, in schools. Those fundamental principles can be applied in so many ways. It's a very creative and supportive institute, and there's so many ways to tap into it. I've met principals there, probation officers, school teachers. Terrific. Thank you. Yes. So thank you, Amy. Um, I am so honored to have you today. Well, it's such you. a gift to have you here from North Carolina. Northeast Pennsylvania welcomes you, and uh, we're happy Thank to you. have you here. So once again, this is Roy Afami for Generation Change. This is our series on bullying. Today we were talking with Dr. Amy Elliott of the Center for Civic Engagement at Duke University in Durham, North Carolina. We're talking about a term called restorative justice. Those of you who are interested in exploring it more, the International Institute for Restorative Justice, IIRP.org. And viewers, we will be right back after these messages. <laughs>